In this section, we are going to discuss different sensors. In this video, I would like to talk about GPS, IMU, and cameras. Three very important sensors in every self-driving car. Let's start with the GPS. The GPS is probably the most famous localization sensor there is. It is a small receiver that communicates with satellites 20,000 kilometers above Earth. This way, it can know in real time where the vehicle is located in global coordinates all over the world. And by global coordinates, I mean longitude and latitude. GPS is a code name or acronym name for the American Satellite Navigation System, Global Positioning System. And just like we have other systems as well, such as the Russian GLONASS, the Chinese Beidou 2, and the European Galileo. The global name for these systems is GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite Systems. A modern GNSS receiver, just like the one in your smartphones, can receive signals from both the American and the Russian systems and fuse them together to get a better position estimation. What are the pros of a GNSS receiver? First, the receiver is very cheap and can be easily mounted on every vehicle or robot. And second, it's free. The US government charges nothing for using its satellites. What are the cons? First, it only works in clear sky. What does it mean? That GPS doesn't work in tunnels or indoor shopping malls. And this is extremely important for dense urban environments. If you don't have a clear open sky scenario, GPS will perform poorly. Some companies are trying to fix it and make an indoor GNSS, but it's still not very common. The second problem is the inherent inaccuracy. The accuracy is not precise enough for self-driving cars. The average accuracy of a civilian GNSS receiver is approximately 5 meters. Now 5 meters is more than enough when you want to navigate your way with ways, but it is insufficient for a robust lane detection, a critical attribute for any self-driving car. For self-driving cars, we need at least a sub-meter accuracy to correctly detect the lane in which the vehicle is located. And the problem becomes more challenging in dense urban environments. Why? Since the tall buildings block the satellite signals. Nevertheless, a GNSS receiver is a great and a beneficial sensor to get an approximated initial location. What kind of information can we extract from a GNSS receiver? First, of course, position. But it's not just a 2D position, it's a 3D position. Lawn, lat, and alt, the height. Pay attention that the 2D position is more accurate than the height estimation due to the satellite constellation. Another very important thing that we can get from a GNSS receiver is time. In fact, many applications use the GPS receivers as time unit for timing. GPS time is extremely accurate since each one of the satellite navigation is equipped with four atomic clocks. The last thing that we can expect to get from a GPS or GNSS receiver is the velocity. Now, this is very important because we usually refer to the velocity as a time derivative of the position, but in GNSS receivers, it doesn't work like this. We get the velocity using a different physical method, the Doppler effect. Now, it means two things. One, that even in dense urban environments, the velocity is much more accurate than the position estimation. And two, that the velocity is independent of the position estimation. They are both computed using two different physical methods, which enable me to use them together very, very efficiently. This is what we call sensor fusion, and we will cover this also in this section. 
The second sensor I want to talk about is called the IMU, which is very important and located in every robotic lab. IMU is a small and cheap sensor which looks like this. It stands for Internal Measurement Unit. It is comprised of three different sensors. The first measures acceleration or accelerometer, which measures the element's acceleration. The second is an angular velocity sensor or gyroscope. And the third is called magnetometer, which measures basically the magnetic field of Earth. Each one of these sensors measure the acceleration, the angular velocity, and the magnetic field in three different axes, X, Y, and Z. Thus, the other name for this sensor is 9 DOF, 9 degrees of freedom. We have 3 degrees of freedom for the accelerometer, 3 degrees of freedom for the gyroscopes, and 3 degrees of freedom for the magnetometer. Hence, 9 total degrees of freedom. What can we do with the IMU? We can do a lot of things, but the most important one is to compute the attitude. Now, the attitude is comprised of three different things. The yaw, the roll, and the pitch. So let me demonstrate it using my hand. This is the pitch. This is the roll. And this is the yaw. The yaw, the roll, and the pitch comprise what we call the attitude of the vehicle. The last sensor we are going to talk about is the camera. Now, the camera is a central sensor and the most important in any autonomous vehicle. Unfortunately, we are not going to talk of the camera in this course. Why? Because it requires image processing and artificial neural networks. What can you do with the camera? A lot of things. You can detect road sign, the layout of the road. You can know when we switch lanes and many other things. This is important to remember. Human navigation is based on our own eyes. We have two eyes in different angles, and this is how we have stereo vision. Stereo vision allows us to know not only what we see, but also the depths, what is closer and what is farther. In many autonomous vehicles today, there are multiple cameras that create stereo vision quite similar to our vision. That's it. 